economic structural reform and the rounds of sanctions against Russia have been challenging the country's economy. Now Russia is trying to find its way out by strengthening its cooperation with other emerging economies. That, at least, is the observation of the president of the New Development Bank. He shared his views with me in an exclusive interview with CGTN on the sideline of the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. These economic forums is really about multilateralism. Indeed. But as you may know, Mr. President, that idea is being challenged, particularly recently. As the head of a multilateral development bank, what do you make of that? Uh, I would say uh, multilateralism and uh, open uh, trade, all these are being challenged. I think that's why it becomes even more uh, necessary and important that uh, uh, countries which were emerging, what I call as countries of the South, mm -hmm. try to stand together and uh, try to do uh, uh, you know, things for themselves. And uh, I think that is the reason why, uh, frankly, the two new development banks were set up, mm -hmm. to uh, make a statement in a way and uh, to prove to ourselves that uh, we can start doing things on our own. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a way, uh, there is a new idea of multilateralism that then you know, comes about because of yeah. this with different governance standards. But doing our own things is different from doing our own things well, efficiently, and also attracting enormous attention and creating a model. Where is it for New Development Bank? Well, you know, it's a very interesting question. Uh, as a banker, I would break it into three parts first. One is, have you got the capital in? It is the financial capital. Yeah. We got Se that already. Yeah, we got that already. Yeah. We are running ahead of schedule. Second, have you got the people capital, the human capital in? We got that. And there is a very rich vein or load of capital in our member countries. And of course, beyond the world, beyond that in the world, if you want. But the member countries themselves provide this rich load of human capital. Third is technology as a capital. Mm -hmm. And uh, clearly today we can leverage technology of a different order than existed 10, 20, 30, 40 years back and run very lean organizations, mm. uh, very light organizations in terms of cost of technology and yet uh, you know, deliver uh, all that you want to deliver. Right. Uh, so three capitals, financial capital, human capital and technology capital, if you leverage, I think that's what epitomizes what we do. That is on your agenda, but how is your doing your agenda for now and how fast will that become a model? for the world to have an alternative. Yeah. That's his question, yeah. indeed, isn't it? Uh, indeed. Uh, I would only say that uh, in, the, uh, in our case, it's on our agenda and it is being implemented. Mm -hmm. So it is visible that this is uh, done. When will it be seen is a very interesting question. Yes. And the answer is also simple. For that, you need to create size. You need to demonstrate that this is not just a question of uh, lending half a billion dollars or a billion dollars. Well, today, in two and a half years, I can say that as of this month end, we have approved loans of five billion. Yes. But the credibility uh, point will come in when you say that, well, this model has now delivered 25 billion or 50 billion and catalyzed another uh, 500, million, 500 billion. Then you become relevant. Yes. I think uh, in that context, I look at this current role that we are all playing out at the NDB, uh, in a way, pioneering role, is to create a strong foundation mm -hmm. for this new type of... Uh, institution and uh, start building the superstructure. Yes. It is our colleagues who will follow who will then take the structure up. And of course you are laying up that foundation for now. Up. Yes. And you also offer green bonds, things like that in order to send a message to the market about what you are Indeed. and also about the kind of model that you are encouraging right now. Indeed. Uh, so we did the green bond issue in uh, China. Yes. Again, the government was very supportive so early in the age when we did not even have a balance sheet. They said that, uh, why don't you look at issuing a bond? We did issue a bond very successfully. Chinese uh, institutions are borrowing in uh, renminbi. Very interesting uh, follow-on, which uh, I must say, this month we have uh, proposals from uh, South Africa to actually raise money in uh, RAND. Mm. So we are now working on how to raise money in uh, South Africa and RAND. This meeting in uh, St. Petersburg is throwing up where clients are saying we want to raise money in rubles. Mm -hmm. So uh, we will do that. And we've been always saying, India, there's a market for rupee. So suddenly what we said two years back, uh, that uh, we want to lend in uh, uh, local currency yeah. becomes feasible. 
And at that point of time, again, the external world did not buy it. They said, oh, is it? But today, I think it's becoming feasible. Why so is that? That's because I think as far as we, the nations are concerned, they find the merit of doing business in a local currency. Because we have seen the volatility in the hard currencies over the last two years, yes. both in exchange rate and interest rate. Mm. And the clients don't want to uh, be stuck with that volatility, so they want a local currency funding. And I'm sure the next move we will see as we go along is what I call uh, the, say, members of the five BRICS nations themselves, the central banks, coming together to offer swap arrangements. Yeah. So that we can swap each other's currencies for trade and not rely on a currency where, or a set of currencies where we then bear the brunt of uh, exchange fluctuations consequent to somebody else's action. Not, none of our actions, somebody else's action, but we bear the cost. There are different reports about New Zealand Bank being approached by different ways of funding chemical companies or uh, raw materials, steel companies, energy companies. Uh, the question is, what is going to be the standard for New Development Bank to make your choice? Our focus is infrastructure and will remain infrastructure. So if you are looking at a corporate entity, we will look at their infrastructure needs to make, let us say, uh, the climate challenges less, to improve what they are doing in terms of the climate area, mm -hmm. these sort of things, not directly in what they are uh, producing, to make the environment more livable. Now, we are also doing some interesting things. In a sense, when we started activity, the leaders uh, gave a signal to me uh, in UFA when we started, mm -hmm. uh, two years, three years back, for the first year, why don't you look at green projects, that is renewable energy projects. We did that. But we are finding uh, it fascinating as to what opportunities are being provided. And I will just use China as an example. Uh, and these are what I call very bold statements, which I am very happy to carry. So China is saying, for example, that waterways have been contaminated because of past accelerated growth. We now want to repair those. Mm. We say we will provide the funding for that. I think this has two messages. How going forward can we avoid you know, waterways being contaminated? And if they are, what sort of repair can be done? That is also know-how, which we can take across to our other member yes. countries, and we will fund it. So we, are, we think that that is absolutely sustainable activity mm -hmm. that's going on. We are finding that a uh, lot of villages in our member countries need attention. Only the urban centers have been getting attention, mm -hmm. whether it is water, this clean drinking water, sanitary situation in yes. terms of disposal of effluent and uh, stuff like that, and of course, rural roads. How you build a relationship with the leaders of the countries that are supporting the new development bank? What is the nature of this relationship? Can you pick up the phone and talk to the president of Russia or president of China, talk about the new initiative that you want to have with the new development bank? How are you working with the finance ministers of these countries, how does the mechanism work? The process is really uh, board driven. I think in our case, uh, in a way, uh, since the board uh, members yeah. come from uh, each of the countries and are uh, very high ranking people in uh, particularly the mm -hmm. finance ministries, I think you seed the germ of an idea in their mind and uh, that grows. And I use demonstration as a key. Mm -hmm. that is some country has done something and that has merit, then you use that as a key. And uh, you use uh, occasions like our annual meeting to showcase things to I others. See. So this year again in uh, Shanghai, we will have the Shanghai government, municipal government presenting things they've done. Mm. In fact, last year in India, I had a team from Shanghai government come and present how the Shanghai development took place. Yes. Uh, what were the key infrastructure efforts they put in to transform Shanghai. Uh -huh. And I can say that almost all the development uh, planning you know, ministries in India who and uh, various section heads were all extremely interested and uh, curious to uh, mm. take it forward. So you excite interest in a vari variety of ways. Yeah. If necessary, finally, you push at uh, the <laughs> level that you mentioned. Now I see the tricks of operation behind the scenes. Having said that, though, one more question about this. China and Russia recently, over the past few months, all have an update of the government according to the country's political uh, uh, time cycles. So, how are you familiarize yourself, the new development bank as well, with these new officials coming into the position 
and also to interact with them about some of the ideas you have and visions that you have. Yeah, I think uh, for in China, for example, uh, we will certainly uh, meet with the Minister of Finance uh, uh, you know, in a few days' time, yes. and I will update him on uh, what we are doing and taking uh, his uh, inputs as they were. Uh, in uh, Russia, in terms of uh, the finance ministry and our dealing ministries, there, are, there is continuity, but I'll also meet with him to understand from him if there is any new uh, approach that mm -hmm. they would like to share with us. Uh, in India, it's a continuous process, so at this point of time. And uh, South Africa, again, this uh, weekend, yes. I look forward to meeting my old friend, uh, Minister Nene, who's come back as finance minister to understand from him what are the priorities that uh, mm. the new president has set. So actually in three, cu three countries, in a way we have had, uh, you know, I would say an update as it were, yes. and uh, we work with. And uh, we will look uh, with <coughs> great interest to uh, what is uh, evolving in uh, Brazil, because they have elections down the year. And also you have regional office likely yes. in Brazil. Yes, we will so open uh, our regional office in Brazil uh, by uh, the year end. And uh, we are learning from our experience in uh, uh, South Africa. Yeah. The regional office provides you a great, uh, I would say, feedback point. Yeah. And also the reverse way and allows you to do uh, what is required to be done to, you know, I would say, generate a project yeah. and then, uh, uh, you know, detail it out. It provides you the front uh, end. Mm. Mr. President, you see the key members of the New Development Bank are also becoming key members of many of the regional and international platforms. Shanghai Cooperation Organization, for example, which is likely to hold their annual summit very soon in early June. How do you see the three countries, China, Russia, and India, who are now members of SEO, going to interact on so many different kinds of forms and platforms vis-à-vis uh, -vis that of the New Development Bank? Yeah, see, as of now, uh, our platform is slightly uh, different. But I take the point that you're making, and as far as we are concerned, what we need to do is uh, understand, you know, what our leadership wants in the context of the SEO. Mm. I think that process is going on. We have not yet understood this. And once we understand that, we will, uh, we will then take the next steps that might be required in our context. But frankly, I think we are in a learning stage on that mm. to understand from our leaders. As you said, three leaders are, three countries are involved there. Yes. And uh, what is uh, the... Uh, the relationship that uh, is evolving. Yeah, a new development grant, by the way, Mr. President, is dealing with the uh, infrastructure building funding and many of the other development projects. But you see regional organizations like ICO or some of the others also taking on new roles, not just about security anymore, not just about anti-terrorism anymore, but economic and trade links as well, financial included. So probably you're going to have more competitors? Yeah. My experience has been that uh, things happen very quickly uh, in certain areas. So when funding is in place, things happen. When funding is not in place, it's very difficult. Now, again, I would think that even within the BRICS, NDB could move forward because there was a clear funding uh, agenda and uh, you would. Exactly. But the rest of it requires much more hard work. They are doing that, and I'm sure they will see the fruits as they go by. Mm -hmm. So in the other groupings, other than free trade, where uh, you know, things move fast in certain contexts, but again, that is being revisited uh, in a yes. different context. Uh, the rest of the places, I think it takes a little time to develop. So in any case, our um, uh, objective is to, uh, in anything that happens, to be a catalyst. So yeah. I would like to drive NDB to a role where, even if uh, there is activity that happens at other ends, how can we be a catalyst in that activity? Mm. Because it is for the common good.